Imagine me in the Maginot Line, sitting on the mine in the Maginot Line. Now it's turned out nice again, the army life is fine. French girls make a fuss of me, I'm not French as you can see, but I know what they mean when they say wee oui, wee, oui. then on the Maginot Line. Now imagine me in the Maginot Line, sitting on the mine in the Maginot Line. Now it's turned out nice again, the army life is fine.
In the Battle of Britain, we took such a hammering from the mighty German Air Force. I knew then something would have to be done to stop the onslaught of the Nazi Empire. But never did I imagine that I would be asked to lead the campaign, to launch the largest invasion in European history. It reminds me now of another English general by the name of Henry, who faced a similar task some 500 years ago. Oh, for a muse of fire that would incend the brightest heaven of invention. Oh, see this online space created thus as a kingdom for our state, princes to act and monarchs to behold the swelling scene. Then should the warlike Henry, like himself, assume the port of Mars and at his heels Least light hands should gold, sword, and Juno crash for employment. But pardon, soldiers all, the flat up raised spirits that have dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring so forth so great an object for you. Can this cockpit hold the vasty fields of France, the beaches of Normandy, the snow covered forests of the Ardennes, the battered shell shocked town of Bastogne? Well, may, may we cram? within your little screens, the very casks that did have fright the air at Agincourt. On your imaginary forces work, if you will, in this small space we are so confined to. If you're a button or a rivet counter, well, look not for accuracy here in our portrayal of historical events, but imagine the tone and the texture of the time brought to life through the voices of our many players. Allow not our alternate timeline of history to offend. We know well the truth and valour of the screaming eagles against the fearful Hun in the Ardennes. Suppose within the girdle of these walls we now confine two mighty monarchies, England and this other place, uh, Germany, you might, might have heard of it, uh, whose high upreared and abut in front the perilous narrow channel parts asunder. Peace out your imperfections with your faults, if you will, and into a thousand parts, divide one man. Think when we talk of tanks, that you see them printing their tracks on the receiving earth. For it's your thoughts that now must see our soldier carry them here and there, jumping over mines, landing on the blood-soaked beaches of Normandy, picture the bunkers, smell the gunfire, Turn the accomplishment of many years into but an hourglass, well, or two with a five minute interval. Allow us to tell this history and upon your humble patience, pray. Gently to hear, kindly to judge. Our simple play. My God, this treaty that is being proposed from our allies is the same as the one that was proposed during the First World War. But how, my Lord, can we resist it now? Well, if we sign, we will be ruled by Europe. The state will lose half of what it now possesses. Well, this treaty strips us of lands, laws and titles. Our parliament, in its attempt to support the war effort, needs to pay some uh, 15 extra divisions, 1,500 new tanks, um, 6,200 officers to be trained, and further money to support the military gentry and those too poor and sick to, to fight. That is the cost of this invasion alone, if we do not sign this treaty. That would drink deep. Well, that would drink cup and all. And how do you suppose we pay for this? We cannot stretch military funding or the cost of munitions. Food is already being rationed. Well, with an invasion, of course, we must convince the king and the people 
that a strong offense is the greatest defense. So I have chosen General Henry Monmouth to lead the invasion. He is full of grace and fair regard. Uh, very good, my lord. He is respected by the troops and truly loved by the king. <laughs> the king would never have agreed to this in his youth. But now, with the scars of the Blitz still fresh in our minds, our king has lost some of that honesty and compassion. We are blessed in this. I find Henry a very capable general. He is a great leader of men. But, my lord, will the king take the risk of pulling our fragile alliance into another Dieppe? <laughs> he seems indifferent, swaying more upon our plan than against it. I have made him an offer in regards to this invitation of France, that it will raise the greatest sum from war that has ever been seen before. How did he receive your offer, my lord? Oh, with good acceptance, I believe. In agreement with our allies, I have drawn up some ownership of titles of certain dukedoms, artefacts and wealth that Germany now possesses that lies within the heart of France. When do we meet with the ambassador? Uh, the ambassador is coming to the war room at four o'clock. Well, my lord, it is four o'clock now. Well, then call in the general and his lieutenants to hear the proposal. As for the spoils of war, well, do not dwell on the subject. I am sure the French will agree to this invasion, as they are so keen to be rid of the German occupation. I will follow your lead, but I'm eager to hear the details of these spoils of war for myself. Mm. Mm. Churchill, Prime Minister Churchill and Field Marshal Montgomery. This is my first officer, Lieutenant Exeter, and uh, my liaison officer, Lieutenant Westmoreland. Gentlemen, shall we call the ambassador, General? Um, not yet. Before we hear him, we need to make clear some things of weight, considering the army's role in this invasion of France. May God and his angels guard you. Good evening, gentlemen. Sure, we, we thank you. Uh, my learned lord, please proceed as to why the underground forces in France should or should not consent to this invasion. God only knows how many shall spill their blood when we are waking our, our sleeping sword of war, after all. And never did two such kingdoms so full of blood be so eager to spill each other's. My lord, we should hear your understanding of the situation. Then hear me and your peers that the king and I give you the right to invade France, take back Europe from Germany with the understanding that all recovered artefacts, weapons and valuables shall become the property of the state. For your part, being charged with the invasion of the realm of France by our law shall give you the right to seize any and all assets for the war effort. Do we have the right and consent from the French to claim these assets? <laughs> the sin upon my head be it. When a man dies in war, let the inheritance descend unto the state. When we win this war, England shall rule the whole of Europe. And so, stand for your own country. Unwind our bloody flag. Look back to your mighty ancestors and invoke that warlike spirit. Defeat the full axis of power in France and all of Europe is ours. We are the noble English. We will win this campaign and take the beaches of Normandy. We will fight them on the beaches. Never give up, never surrender. Awake your remembrance of these valiant dead from the first war. The blood and courage that renowned them runs in your veins. The time to attack is now. Churchill here has the details of this invasion, a most mighty of endeavors. We all expect that we should rouse ourselves, as did the former loins of our blood. We know we have cause and means and might. Never has a general been better loved and had more loyal soldiers than Henry. <laughs> With blood and sword and fire, we win the right. The mighty British Empire, along with our allies, have raised you an almighty army, the likes of which have never been seen before. Gentlemen, we must not only arm to invade France, but we must also make preparations to defend at home. Germany will surely take all advantages if we move so many troops at once. Uh, there shall be a wall sufficient to defend the first wave, provided by the American Air Force, Operation Overlord. 
Let's see. And by boat, the Americans land at two beaches, Omaha and Utah. The Canadians primarily at Juneau and our own British blood on sword and gold. Never before have we gone in with such force. And when we invade France, we put at risk the lives of all nations. Including the French civilians, my lord. When our chivalry has been in France and left nothing but widows, Europe will thank us for its freedom. There's a saying, a proverb, very old but true. Once the eagle England being in prey, to her unguarded nest the weasel comes, playing the mouse in absence of the cat. It follows then that the cat must stay at home. But we have locks to safeguard such things and pretty traps to catch the petty thieves. Still, I am concerned. How will we be received upon landing in France? In government, it is your job to conjure up moral reasons for this war. Therefore I say, the heavens divide, the state of man divide. Obedience to your country and sacrifice of whomever is in our way for the freedom of all men. We are the sad-eyed executioners of justice. Our actions must end in one purpose. If we do not act now, the enemy will grow too strong. Very well. Call in the ambassador. For now we are well resolved. By God's help, Germany will be defeated. We'll bend it to our needs or break it all into pieces. Our history shall be full of our courageous acts or else our graves will tell a different story. Now, ambassador, we are well prepared to know the pleasure of our cousin, Germany, but I understand you bring a message from our self-aggrandizing Reich Marshal and not the Fuhrer himself. Shall we hear terms for his surrender? Do you wish to hear the message in full? But of <clears> course, <throat> we are not tyrants. Therefore, with frank plainness, tell us the German's mind. In answer to your claim, our good Reichsmarschall bid you be advised there's nothing in France that can be won. And he calls for you and your allies to either surrender or join with us against the true enemy of us all, the Russians. He sends you this gift and desires to hear no more from little England. This and more insults my rack marshal speaks. What gift is that? A set of balls. Tennis balls, sir! <laughs> we are glad your rice marshal is so pleasant with us. When we have matched our rackets to these balls, we will in France play a set that will strike his Fuhrer hard. He has met his match with us. Tell him I will rise up in such full glory that it will strike his Luftwaffe blind. You can tell him this mockery of his has turned his balls to gunstones and his soul will pay for it for it will mock mothers from their sons, mock bunkers from his fortified beaches. Tell the Reich Marshal that his jest is of low wit, when thousands more did weep than did laugh at it. Convey the ambassador to the aerodrome with safe conduct. Gentlemen, make preparations for invasion. All divisions soon collected and SOE operations set in motion. More feathers upon the wings of our air armada. Let every enlisted man be given his orders. Operation Overlord and Normandy shall by foot, air and sea be fought. Now all the youths of England are on fire. Now thrive the armourers and honour lies in the breast of every man, following blindly like all good soldiers. For now sits expectation in the air hides our sword from hilts unto the point. The Germans, advised by good intelligence of this most dreadful preparation, shake in their boots and seek to divert the English. O oh, England, model to thy inward greatness, like little body with a mighty heart, but for three corrupted men. Cambridge, Grey, and Scroop. 
these men have conspired with the fearful Germans, and by their deeds must die for treason. The sun is paid. The traitors are agreed. The general is set from London, and the scene is now transported gentles to Southampton. There is the playhouse now. There must you sit. And thence to France shall we convey you safe and bring you back, charming the narrow seas to give you gentle pass. For, if we may, we'll not offend one stomach with our play. Well met, Corporal Nim. Good morning, Lieutenant Bardolf. What, I piss you and you mates again? <laughs> For my part, I care not. I say little, but when times are tough, I smile. Be that as it may, I dare not fight, but I will hold my own. I'm a skilled but simple man. I can toast cheese on the end of my bayonet. It helps me endure the cold. <laughs> I'll buy you breakfast if you and piss will be friends again. We'll all be free sworn brothers when we ship out to France. Come on, Corporal Nim. I will live as long as I may. That is for certain. And when I cannot live any longer, I will take my eternal sleep. That's the rendezvous of it. It's French, I'll have you know. It is certain, Corporal Nim, that Pistol is now married to Nell quickly. And certainly, she did you wrong. For you're in love with her. Were you not? I cannot tell. Things may be as they may. Men may sleep. And they may have their throats about them at the time. And I have a very sharp boot knife here somewhere. And I have patience. Here comes ancient Pistol and his wife, good corporal. Be patient now. And oh, now me old mate Pistol, that goes it. Pistol? Base tyke. Calls me out. Now by this hand. I swear, no more, right, shall my Nell be taking lodgers. No, by my honour. Well, not for long anyway. For we cannot lodge and board a dozen honest women who live by their uh, wits. For it be thought we keep a baldy house. Good, Lieutenant Corporal. There's nothing here to get upset about. Pesh! <laughs> Pish! Pish on you, Iceland dog, you prick-eared cur of Iceland. Good Corporal Nim, show your valour. Put your knife away. Will you shog off? I will have your soul. Soul? <laughs> soul? Egregious dog, you vile viper. My soul right in your face. My soul in your teeth and on your throat and in your hateful lungs. Yeah, down your throat and worse, in your nasty mouth. I'll push my soul out of your bowels. <laughs> I, can no take it. I can take it. Yeah. Pistols cock is up, right? Flashing fire will follow. I'm no cure. You can't take me. I'm warning you, pistol. You go foul with me. I'll cut you with my knife. I'll poke your brains out just to make me laugh. <laughs> you vile bastard. I'll kill you. Your grave is gaping wide and death is near. So take your last breath, son. Hear me. Hear what I say. He who strikes the first blow, I'll cut them up as I am a soldier. Buy my oath as a soldier or offer my hand and fury's done. Give me a fist. Ain't you got a fighting spirit? Hey, you slag, what you got to say? I will cut thy throat by my honour as a soldier. But not today. <laughs> Couple of gold. Is, is that what they say in French? Is that for cutting your throat? I defy you, you hound. You think, you think you're going to take my wife? Oi, don't you spit at me. I'll put you in the hospital. 
Now, quickly, is mine, right? That's enough, right? Are we done? Hey, please, you must come. It's me old man, Sir John. He's asked for you now. He's very sick and in bed. Bardolph, he's asked for your face too. Oh, fear Captain Falstaff is at death's door. Oh, my God. The stone, the crows. Oh, the good General Henry. This will break his heart. Good husband, you fetch him quick. Come on, I'll make you two friends. We must go to France together. Why the devil should we be putting eyes on each other's throats? Yeah, well, let Walker let's say we'll be friends in this foul time. You'll pay me the eight shillings I want off you at betting. Base is the slave that pays. Now that I will have, or no deal. By my manhood, I shall not. That's, come on, let's go. By my manhood, he that makes the first thrust, I'll kill him by this sword, I will. Well, by your sword, that is an oath. An oath will eventually be broken. C Corporal Nim, will you be friends? If you will not, why? Then be enemies with me too. Now, please, fight or shut up. I shall have the eight shillings I want of you at betting. Yeah, all right. I'll pay you in liquor. I will. I will give to you in in friendship and and brotherhood. I, I'll live by Nim, and, and Nim shall live by me. I, I shall share whatever I, I steal. All right. Give me your hand. Come on. I shall have my money. Oh Jesus! In cash, most honestly paid. Well then. That's it then. Oh, you yeah. never listen to me. Come in quickly to Sir John. Oh, my poor heart. He is so shaken with fever. He is so sad to be old. Sweet men, you come to him. Oh, the General Henry, he said some bad things about his old mate. And really, that's what killed him. Nim. You've spoken right, son. His heart is fractured and, well, fucked, really. Sir General Henry's a good man, but he said pass some bad judgment on his old friend. That's the reality of it. <laughs> Sweet men, you come well, to him. No, nah, let, let, let's go and say our condolences. Uh, like lambs, we shall live and, well, go to the bleeding slaughter, I suppose. <laughs> For God's sake, I can't believe the General trusts these traitors. They shall be apprehended now we know who the spies are. How smooth they act, and they swear loyalty to the Crown. Thankfully, an interception was sent to us by the Resistance. These men were our allies, but now should they sell our lives to a foreign power? Court Martial is too good for their treachery. Welcome, Captain Cambridge, and... My good friend, Captain Scroop. Gentlemen, please give me your thoughts. Do you not think that our powers will cut through the forces in France? Do you not think us able to execute our plan? Well, for which we are, of course, all gathered here. Uh, no doubt, General, if each man does his part. Oh, I have no doubt, since we are, of course, well armed and carry our hearts upon our sleeves. And we need every man to succeed in the defeat of the enemy. Oh, no, never was there a better leader more loved than you, sir. Not a soldier alive that sits in fear under your leadership. Well, we therefore have great cause to be thankful for the men we have assembled here today. Let each man be judged upon his merit and according to the worthiness of his actions. So shall we all, with steel hearts and refreshed hope, do our services. We expect no less. Oh, uh, Lieutenant Exeter, fetch uh, the soldier that committed the offence upon me yesterday. A uh, Private Grey, the, the one who attacked me. Uh, we thought at first it uh, was an excess of wine that set him off. I was just about to pardon him. But uh, pray, give me your counsel, Cambridge and Scroop. What do you think we should do with Private Grey? Oh, 
Do not be merciful, sir. I say let him be punished. Make an example of him. Let us not be merciful. No, 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 no. Court martial and, and punish him too. Take take a limb off while you're at it. General, you show too much mercy if you punish him. Please let him taste my correction. You think too much of me, gentlemen. Not too heavy handed against this poor wretch. His little faults are made from his temper. So shall we not be kind to this man? Or how then shall we act when proper capital crimes are committed? Cambridge and Scroop both here would have him punished. Are you both the late commissioners here? I am, sir, yes. You asked me to join you here. You also summoned me here just yesterday, sir. Yes, of course, some uh, new orders are needed. Cambridge, there is, there is yours, and they're yours. Scroop, read them, and know I know your worthiness. Is there a problem, gentlemen? General, you read those papers oh, that you so lose your complexion. This, this is false information, General. Look how their faces change. Why, what do you read there that has caused the blood to drain from you? General, I, I do confess my fault, and I do beg your forgiveness, sir. I beg of you, General, show us some mercy. The mercy that was so ready in us is by your own counsel cut off and killed. Do not for shame to talk of mercy. For your own reasons you have turned as dogs upon their master. I thought you noble, Cambridge, but now to have switched the line so freely. And you, Scroop, how I once respected you. These here are the letters you sent through the German spy network that did conspire for a small price, I might add, to reveal our plan. What shall I say to you, Captain Scroop? You cruel, ungrateful, savage and inhuman creature. You that had the key to all my counsels. It's here in black and white, treason. If I pardon you now, then we have already lost. Arrest them. They will answer to the law for their crimes and only God will save their souls. I arrest you for high treason by the name of Lieutenant Cambridge. Wait. I arrest you Wait. for high treason by the name of Captain Scroop. Wait, I, I, I repent my fault more than my death and I beg your forgiveness and let my life pay the price now. for it. You will hear your sentence in court martial, Scroop. You have conspired against our royal army. Joined with an enemy, you would have sold your oh, king to no. slaughter, his no. subjects to oppression, and the whole United Kingdom into desolation. General, you must answer to every letter of the law. It was Get them out of my sight. General. Take them away. General, it was our General, please. Move it, scum! Now, men, to the revised plan for the invasion of France. This new enterprise, I need make clear, is for your eyes only. Thank God we brought to light this dangerous treason lurking in our way. Take these new orders and assign your office as well. Now may our war advance. For king and country, we invade the realm of France. Aye, sir. You've received your papers. Oh, honey, sweet husband. Let me take you to Spain's. Take me to Staines? Oh, that's not a good idea. Oh, no, hang on, bloody hell. Not in front of all the other lads. Wait. Hey. No, listen, although my manly heart <laughs> does yearn for it, but off for blighty. Nim, raise your spirits, son. Boy, bristle up that courage. Take those glasses off. Oh, Captain Falstaff. He's brown bread. But I must now lead these sorry men. I wish I were with him, wherever he is, either in heaven or in hell. I'm sure he's not in hell. He's in Arthur's bosom, if ever man went to Arthur's bosom. Yeah. He kept it just between 12 and 1, even at the <sighs> turn of the tide. And as I saw him fumble with the sheets and smile, I knew there was but one way out. How are you, Sir John, I said. And he cried out. God, 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 three or four times. Now I, to comfort him, said you should not say, think of God. You shouldn't think of those things at these times. No. Put me hand into the bed and I felt his feet and they were cold as stone. Oh. Up to his knees no. and they were as cold as stone. And upwards and upwards I went. And everything was as cold as any stuff. Hey, they say he cried out for drink. Aye, that he did. And for women? No, 
that he did not. Mm. Yeah, he did, and said they're all devils. Mm. Oh, I never stand the way he did talk about women. He said once that the devil would take him disguised as a woman. And indeed he did in some sort of way, the way he handled women. But he was also romantic and he called us all the whores of Babylon. <laughs> Do you not remember when uh, he lovingly called them black souls burning in the fires of hell? Yeah. Well, that fuel is gone out. That maintained that fire. Any stories are all we got left of him. <laughs> yeah, we get off then. Soon they'll be sealing up our space in Southampton. No more leave until we embark for Europe. Yeah, come. Let's away. My love. Give me your lips. Come here. <laughs> Christ, have you cleaned your... Are you wearing any clothes? No. Talk about off the shoulder number. Now, listen, my love. When we are gone, trust no one. Because their oaths are made of straw. Men who don't fight, right, are wafer cakes, wankers and dogs, basically. So, my little feathered duck, we go as fellows in arms to France, Greece, Italy, where we land, we will be like leeches to suck food in the very blood of that rich land. <laughs> oh, that sounds like some awesome food. He does, doesn't it? Touch my soft mouth now, as oh. we must march. <laughs> oh, farewell, Ooh. hostess. Now, enough Ooh. of that. I cannot kiss, but farewell. Adieu. Listen, right, a good housewife you'll be while we're gone, right? Keep yourself close. I'm talking about your legs. <laughs> and this war will soon be over. It'll be over in less than a year. I promise Oh, farewell, sweet family. Farewell. Adieu. Adieu. Uh, Adieu, babes. Adieu. Bonjour. Bonjour. So, the English, with full power, are upon us. Our spies are concerned that there is an invasion plan. What do we have by means of defences? I have requested reinforcements to be sent directly to the sea border. We must fortify every town. Report to me what you have done with your men and armory. So English approach with fear forces. We should fear this, as fear may teach us to be prepared, and it may be fatal to neglect the English, yeah? We must without it fear. We are already armed against the foe. In war, defenses and preparations should be maintained in expectation of an invasion, but let us do it with no show of fear. We heard that England is full of decrepit old modest dancers. <laughs> ah, you are too much mistaken in this, General. The great state of England is well supplied. A spy in England says there is a large gathering of troops towards the coast of England. I fear there may be a greater plan afoot. Well, is it so, Heinrich? Or you just think it's so? Huh. It's marked next. In defense, it is best to weigh the enemy more mighty than he seems, so that my preparations for defense have failed. Do we think this General Henry Strong, and he is born out of that bloody strait that haunted us in the First World War, no? Mm. We have received a communication from England, uh, an answer to our treaty. What does he say? Perhaps a, a final charge to sign the treaty? Nine, nine, turn your head and stop pursuit. You, you act like cowardly dogs who run into the first sign of danger. Take a shot at the English. And let them know what a mighty army we have. You are the head of the snake. Self-love is not so vile a sin as self-neglect. What is the message from England? He greets you. He wills you abide by the law of nations and the decree from the crown of England. <laughs> he bids you surrender, my Führer. <laughs> <laughs> or else what follows? 
bloody constraints. In a fierce tempest is he coming. In thunder and earthquake, like a Jove, this hungry war opens his jaws, and upon your head rests the widow's tears, and orphans' cries, and dead men's blood. Pfft. This is his threatening message. This is his claim. Oh, I desire nothing more than the defeat of England. Tomorrow shall I let you know my mind in full. Yeah, boy. We will dispatch our forces to this sea border immediately. Nine, nine. We shall dispatch forces when conditions are in our favor. One night is short. What can they do in one night? <laughs> The imagined thing, a sea, fly, in motion with no less celerity than that of salt. Suppose that you have seen the well-appointed general at Hampton Pier embark his royalty and his brave fleet, play with your fancy, and in some behold upon the hempen tackle, ship boys climbing. Here, the shrill whistle which doth order give, the sounds confused. Behold, the southern sail, born and creeping. the huge bottom through the furrowed sea, breasting the lofty surge, all oh, who but think, to stand upon the ravage and behold a city on the inconstant billows dancing. For so appears this fleet majestica, holding due course to Normandy. Follow, follow, grapple your minds to steerage of this navy, as you leave your England as dead midnight steer, guarded by grandeurs and babies and old women, either past or not arrive to pith and whistle. ordinances on their carriages, the fatal mouth gaping on girded Normandy. With Lynn's thought now, the devilish cannon touches, and down goes all before them. Still be kind and eke out our performance with your mind. Once more under the breach, dear friends, once more, or close them all up with our English dead. In peace, there is nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when a blast of war blows in our ears, imitate the action of a tiger, stiffen the sinews. Summon up your blood, the sky's fair nature with hard-favoured rage. Now set the teeth and stretch the nostril wide. Hold hard your breath and bend every spirit up to his full height. On! On, you noblest English! Dishonour not your mothers. Now attest that those whom you call fathers did beget you. Free copy now to men of grosser blood and teach them how to war. You, private, whose limbs were made in England. Show us here the metal of your pasture. Let us show that you are worth your breeding, which I doubt not. Now, ah, so let us show that you are worth your breeding. For there is none of you so mean and base that has not noble luster in your eyes. I see you stand like greyhounds in the slips, straining upon the start. The game's afoot. Follow your spirit. But upon this charge, cry go for Henry, England, and St. George! I find it helps to sting something, so you're less scared, you know. Gear you up a bit. Who are fighting for the main plan? We're fighting the boss! <laughs> what you say, boy? I can't hear you. Speak 
on the left flank. The Bunk left on the left flank. On the left flank. Tell your captains that we must have some help here. Captain Gloucester on the left flank. The oh, we're all around. They're on Captain, those directions. Captain Gloucester, to whom the order of the assault is given, is directed by the Irishman, a very valiant soldier. Oh, it's Captain McMorris, is it not? Oh, I think so. Oh, I think he is an ass. He has no more directions in the di true disciplines of war than a puppy dog. Oh, here he comes. And the Scots Captain Jamie. And Captain oh. McMorris with him. Captain Jamie is a marvellous gentleman, that is certain. And uh, of great knowledge in war. He is as experienced as any military man in the world in the disciplines of war. Mighty fucking me. I say, good day, isn't it, Captain Florin? Good day to you, sir, C Captain James. Captain McMorris, have you quit the left bunker flank? What new orders? Oh my Christ, I, I'm done! The work on that flank was so tough I nearly sounded a retreat. By my hand, I swear the work is not done. I would have blown up the whole of Normandy to save us from that onslaught. Captain McMorris, I will relieve you of that left flank. Just say the word. There's no time for discourse. The day is hot in weather and in war, and the general wants us to breach that there town, and you're, you're talking, you do nothing. Shame on us all. Oh, by my hand, and yours if there's worth any. Our sport to be caught, the work to be done. Captain McMorris, I think you need some correction. There are not many of your nation left. Uh, of my nation? What is my nation? You villain, you toffee bastard, tell me, who talks of my nation? It didn't mean it like that, Captain McMorris, but I think you do not know what you are doing, and your lack of discipline in war will get us all killed. I do not know you. By my hand, I swear. For Christ's sake, if you talk to me like that, I will cut your head off. Gentlemen, stop! You mistake each other. Calm down. Aye, ten lads. That's a foe, foe. That sounds like the strong point's been taken! Captain McMorris, when there is better opportunity, I will uh. tell you, I know the disciplines of war and there is an end of it! Now, Governor of Lyon Sumer, this is the end for you! Therefore, give yourselves up! I know you are proud men, but if you defy us now, many men will die. I give you my word, as I am a soldier, that we will spare your lives. But if I begin the battery again, I will not leave your town till in her ashes she lies buried. The gates of mercy shall be all shut up, and the violence yourselves will have caused. Therefore, men of the ile sur take pity on your town and on your garrison. While I am in command, no one shall be harmed. Will you yield and avoid further bloodshed? Our expectations are low. The division general that is in charge is not here, and he is with his friends. The powers are not yet ready to resist so great a siege. Therefore, put your town and our lives to your mercy. Enter our gate. We no longer defend. Open the gates. Exit to take your men and enter. Fortify as well as you can. Be merciful to any of the townsfolk in the surrendering garrison. We will retire here for a short while. This fight is not over. Tonight in here we are guests. 
And tomorrow, we must march. Alice. <laughs> Oui, madame. Alice, you have uh, you have been to England and you know uh, the language. <laughs> oh, oui, on peut, oui, a little, madame. Oh, uh, qu'est-ce que c'est? Um, what is uh, le anglais for uh, la main? Oh, la main. Oh, that is the and. The and. Ah, les doigts? Oui. Oh. Les doigts. Oh, good Lord. Come on, I forget les doigts. Um, but it will come to me, the word for les doigts. Oh, I believe it is um, the fangre. Yes, oui, the fangre. Ah. La main, the hand. Les doigts, the fangre. Oui. <laughs> I think I am a very apt student. <laughs> um, I have learned two words of English already. <laughs> no, oui. <laughs> Say, uh, what is uh, the word for les ongles? Les ongles, that is the Niles. Ooh, the Niles. Ah, mm. oui, bon, bien sûr. <laughs> uh, so let, uh, let me recite it all together so far. <laughs> Le main, the hand, the droit, the fangre, the Niles. Ah, well done, madame. Bon, bon, excellent Anglaise. <laughs> I'm saying it right. What is uh, the Anglais for le bras? Uh, the arm, madame. Oh, and the and la côte? Uh, the l'elbow. Oh, the elbow. <laughs> um, I will uh, recite all the words that you taught me so far. Oh, I think it is too difficult, I think, madame. Huh? Well, let me, I beg to differ. <laughs> and the the no, the armor, the elbow. The elbow, madame. Oh, Lord, I forgot the elbow. Uh, what is um, the word for la la call? Um, the nick, madame. The nick. And the middle? Uh, the chin. Oh, le call, the nick. Le menton? The Say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I may say so, you pronounce the words just like a native English speaker. <laughs> I have no doubt I would learn it and in a short time do good willing. <laughs> uh, now you have not forgotten what you have learned already, huh? Uh, no, I will recite it for you right now. The and the the Niles. Oh, forgive me, that is what I said. The nail, the arm, the elbow. Uh, forgive me, uh, the elbow. That is what I said. Oh, oui, bien the sûr. Elbow, the neck, the sin. Qu'est-ce que c'est? What does the word for uh, la pian and the robe? Ah, uh, the foot and um, the count. The, uh, the, the foot? Oui. And the, the count? <laughs> oh la la! Oh! Those, oh Lord, those are vulgar words. Oh, yeah. Ugly, immodest, <laughs> oh, not fitting for respectable angels to speak. Oh, no. I would not, I would not utter those words in all the Lords of France for all the world. <laughs> oh, le foot and le cot. <laughs> Nevertheless, I will uh, 
I will recite the words for you right now. All together. The arm, the thumb, the nail, the arm, the elbow, the neck, the skin, the foot, and the count. <laughs> oh, bravo, bravo. That is excellent, madame. <laughs> ah, that is enough for one lesson. <laughs> ah, oui. Uh, allez, tu as uh, mouche. <laughs> ah, oui, bon. <laughs> It is certain now, the English have passed the river Seine. And this is move quickly, Commander. We cannot stay here in France. Let us quit all now and give the vineyards to these barbarous people, or I'm sure they will destroy everything. Oh, God in himmel, shall we empty our luxuries and give up all our lords to these wild, savage Fotsen? Huh? Just run back up so suddenly with our tails between our legs? Norman bastards. Bastards, Normans, if the English march on us, I will not withdraw without a fight. What would I do? Sell my duties and, and, and live on a dirty fucking farm out in the stinks? The English? Goods of battle? Bah! Where have they found such metal? Is their climate not raw and foggy and dull? Where their sun looks pale and they drink bitter air? Rah! When I honor and the fatherland, I will defeat them, English bastard warriors! The English say we have no honor or grace. They are hot on our heels and call us cowardly runaways! Bah! There is Mountjoy! Call him in! Let him greet the English! We sharp defiance! Sharpen on your swords! Shame on you all! You let this General Henry of England sweep through our land, now painted in the blood of Normandy! Rush on them now, like an avalanche of snow from the Alps! You have power enough and reinforcements in Rian! Bring him to us as our prisoner, now! My fear, his numbers are so few, and his men, um, they are sick and famished from their march. I'm sure when they see our mighty army, the hell heart, his heart will drop in fear. Our victories in battle far outweigh his own. He will offer us his surrender. In haste, send Mount Joy with the message. Send him to say that the English general, if he surrenders now, we will spare his life. You shall stay with us! Nein! No, no, uh, General, uh, uh, mein Führer, uh, please let me go and fight. Be patient, for you shall remain with us for now. Yeah. Dispatch the messenger, have him quickly bring us word of England's fall. Jawohl, mein Führer. Jawohl. Jesus.
We have been redeployed to Bastogne, Belgium, to help our American allies. Here I have received intelligence on the location of a prisoner, Catherine, close friend to Charles de Gaulle, held somewhere at the Austrian-German border. If we can break through here at Bastogne and advance through Luxembourg, we may be able to save her. The intelligence whispers of a ceasefire and prisoner exchange. If this next battle can be won, we shall break the back of this bloody war. Only then can we strike a bargain with Germany for peace. How now, Captain Fluellen? Have you come up from the bridge? Oh, I assure you, there is a most excellent military operation set up on the bridge. Is Lieutenant Exeter and his company safe? Well, Lieutenant Exeter has, su has survived, although uh, he may have lost half of his regiment. In honor and duty, I owe him my life. He held the bridge most valiantly. There is no braver Lieutenant. Oh, I thought I saw uh, fighting alongside him this man. What's his name? Uh, he's called Pistol. I don't know him. Oh, cap Captain, Captain, can you do me a favour? Lieutenant Exeter is your friend, is he not? Oh, I and I praise God, he is mine too. <laughs> well, listen, Bardolf and Nimrod, both soldiers, firm and sound of heart, have by some cruel favour of God. You won't believe oh, this, by your right? patience, ancient pistol, Fortuna is blind. I know a poet that makes a very excellent description of it. Uh, what is it now? Oh, fortune is a reward for good morals. <laughs> well, Fortune is their foe and frowns upon them. Listen, listen, they have gone to town and purchased, oh, well, for better word of it, they've, they've stolen some small things. And, and now they face court martial. I mean, they might be hanged. I mean, it's ridiculous. Both down, they're both down to death. Please, I beg you, let the men go free. Exeter has given the order, but you know, but you know, if you could speak to him, Captain, but for the life of Bardolf and Nim, they're good lads. We need every man we could get, right? Oh, Pistol, I do understand. <laughs> ah, thank you, thank you so much, Captain. Oh, thank wait, you. wait, 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 wait. Uh, some discipline ought to be uh, used. Now, what did they steal? Ah. Happy much. It was just some candles. There might have been some gold holders attached to them. Um, and a robe just to keep them warm. It's bloody brass monkeys out here, isn't it? I mean, it may, there may have been a ceremonial robe, but, you know, who can tell? They were, they were found in the church at the time. What? No way! You'd better get out of here before you're caught martial too, just for being his friend. Robbed the church? <laughs> Did, 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 I, did I say friend? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, don't be damned at my friendship team. He was a good man once, though, you know what I mean? What, just the once? <laughs> Why, this is an arrogant rascal. I remember. He fought at the... Oh, I assure you. Although I didn't see him fight much, but he did utter some brave words. Drink-fueled, I imagine. <laughs> now, he's a fool that goes to war so when he returns to London he can call himself a soldier and tell stories of how bravely he fought and how he defeated the enemy with ale-washed wits and gin-soaked courage. <laughs> I tell you what, Captain Gower, he's as brave a man than you would think. Well, he would gladly show the world the holes in his coat, although they are made from neglect and not from fighting. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good day, General, sir. Howdy, these men. Flewellen, have you come from the bridge? Aye, sir. Lieutenant Exeter has very gallantly taken and held the bridge, sir. Although Exeter has suffered some heavy casualties. And uh, what of your casualties, Flewellen? Well, I think we have lost half of the men, and two that are likely to be hung, um, executed for robbing a church. Uh, Lieutenant Bardolf and Captain Nim, if you know them. We would have all such offenders court-martialed immediately. And I give express charge to be put through the ranks that in our marches through this country, there be nothing stolen that is not paid for from any of the villages, and none of the French abused. You know me by my name, sir. I am messenger of the German general, sir. Well, I know you. What shall I know of you? Uh, my general's mind. Unfold it then, quickly. He says to Henry of England, though we seem dead, we did but sleep. 
advantage. He is a better soldier than rashness. We could have beaten you at Normandy, but you took us by surprise. England shall repent for this cowardly warfare. Therefore, consider a surrender and repay losses we have borne. You have lost a number of your troops and cannot continue to push forward. To this, he adds defiance and says you have betrayed your soldiers and condemned them to death. What is your name? Montjoy, sir. You may count yourself lucky that we have a saying in England to never shoot the messenger. So I'll turn you back with this message. Tell your commander I am here. My surrender will be in my death. Tell him we will march on and we will let nobody stand in our way. I shall deliver this message. Thank you, General. I hope they will not come upon us now. The men are so weak and unfed. We are in God's hands, brother, not theirs. March to the bridge and beyond the river. We march until we reach the town of Bastogne. Yes, sir. And Herr, my unit mm -hmm. is the best military unit in the world. <laughs> you, you have an excellent unit, but no. let the Luftwaffe have it too. It is the best in Europe, but where is it now? Will it never be more either? <laughs> oh, no. You and, and Heinrich, you talk of your units and uh, the Luftwaffe? <laughs> you have served in both and risen to, you have risen fast, like your little winky, to the highest distinction. Heinrich <laughs> <laughs> says, oh, I will not find my place with any man tonight. Oh, I will. Uh, Balls on the earth like Pegasus and saw like a hawk. <laughs> sink under mine and fussing. <laughs> <laughs> you are drunk, man. Pegasus is a fucking horse. Uh, uh, yes, it means Pegasus is beyond fire. I am a yeah. uh, uh, horse. <laughs> is he, General? A most excellent horse. <laughs> a horse and no more, sir. <laughs> I, once, I once wrote a song about this. It goes... Wonder of nature! Oh, Jesus Christ, my ears. We have heard the songs you make for your mistress. <laughs> I composed it for my men. In what time, my men are my mistress. Well, I hope you keep your men in line as well as you do your mistress. I don't know my men as I do my mistress. Well, I fear you may have won more battles in the bedroom than in the field, no matter how few. <laughs> oh, you call it battles in the bedroom, Heinrich, because you have to fight with the units that God gave you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it, enough, enough of the fact he's only slept with his mother. Heinrich, the uniform that I saw in your tent, are those stars or suns on it? They are stars, of course, and the Iron Cross. Some of those you know. stars will fall tomorrow, I think. <laughs> like some men present, I have earned every star. That, that may be, Heinrich, but you were made command by connection over experience. Is that not so? Connection, connection. Uh, have we both not uh, benefited from our relationship to the Führer? <laughs> I, as his friend. Oh, oh God, what, a, what time is it? I, <clears throat> will it never be day? I will walk through the magic field tomorrow and my way shall be paved with English faces. Oh. 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 Is it what? not true that we have Far more soldiers than the enemy. Tomorrow we cannot lose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, 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 man, yeah. I would not say this for fear that I may be proved wrong. <sighs> but I do wish for the morning, for I will cut off the ears of the English 
hold them high and say, do you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who will make, uh, listen, shut up, you drunken fools. Who will make a bed with me by noon? I will have 20 prisoners. 40 Deutschmarks that that uh, is Scheiße. It is midnight. I will go on myself. Good night. Uh, good night. Good night. Good night, lightweight. <laughs> Herman longs for morning. He longs to destroy the English, but he never talks of the spe specific, specific battles that I have heard of. Take your times, Gozenzi. Nor will he do any killing himself tomorrow. Herman will keep his uniform clean. Yeah, well, does he have any battle experience? Uh, to have been promoted so fast, yeah? Nine, nine. How I many is he, uh, old friend of the Führer? Yes, I know what he gets up to with the Führer. I've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> As they say, there is flattery in friendship. Yes, uh, better the devil. De it's something like a better devil. I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, is he? The English. Still, I was in 1,500 paces of our camp. Shoo! Poor Ashlocks. They do not long for the morning as we do. What a wretched race these English bastards are, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> if the English had any apprehension, they would turn and run away. Schnell! Yeah, yeah. If their heads had any intellectual thought, they would not wear such heavy helmets. <laughs> That tiny island of England, it breeds very headstrong creatures. Yeah. But they cannot see when they are beaten. It, it would be, now listen now, it would be foolish for us to run from them into the mouth of the Russian bear. Yeah. There are fleas that hang on the lip of a lion. The English, though, they are rough, leaving their wits with their wives who cook yeah. great meals of boiled beef. Then they eat like hungry wolves and fight like blind devils. <laughs> yeah, but now the English are surely out of beef. <laughs> they, That's they, like I am out of for their beef curtains. <laughs> and we will find out in the morning that the English only have stomach to eat and not to fight. Now <laughs> is the time to arm ourselves. It is. It is. What's... Oh, it is nearly two o'clock, but let us see by ten. We shall each kill a hundred English men. You're all. You're fucking all. Fire answers fire, and through their paley flames, each battle sees the others unperfaced. Steed threatens steed in high and boastful knees, piercing the night's dull ear. And from the tents, the armourers accomplishing the knights with busy hammers closing rivets up give dreadful note of preparation. The country cocks do crow, the clocks do toll, and the third hour of drowsy morning name. Proud of their numbers and secure in soul, the confident and over lusty Germans do the low rated English play at dice and chide the crippled, tardy-gated knight, when like a foul and ugly witch doth limp so tediously away. The poor condemned English, like sacrifices, by their watchful fire sit patiently and inly ruminate the morning's danger, and their gesture sad investing lank-clean cheeks and war-worn coats, presenteth unto the gazing moon so many horrid ghosts Oh, nah, who will behold the royal captain of this ruined band? 
walking from watch to watch, from tent to tent. Let him cry praise and glory on his head. Bids them good morrow with a modest smile. He visits all his host and calls them brothers, friends and countrymen. Upon his royal face there is no note. How dread an army hath enrounded him. Nor doth he dedicate one jot of colour to the weary and all watch night. But freshly looks and overbears the taint with cheerful semblance and sweet majesty. That every wretch pining and pale before beholding him plucks comfort from his looks. Largest universal, like the sun, his liberal eye doth give to everyone. Oh, thawing cold fear, but mean and gentle all, behold as may unworthiness defying. Little touch of Henry in the night. And so our same muster the battle fly, where, oh for pity, we shall much disgrace with four or five most vile and ragged foils, right ill disposed in brawl ridiculous, the name of Bastogne. Yet sit and see, minding true things by what their mockeries be. that we are in great danger. The greater therefore should our courage be. For God Almighty, there is some soul of goodness in all things evil, for our bad neighbour makes this morning ugly. Erpingham, I do hope you've made a good bed for yourself. Yes, sir. It's not in my life. I may say, now I lie like a king. <laughs> when it's good for men to love their pains, then the mind is sharp and not a broken and drowsy grave. Oh, please, lend me your cloak, Thomas. Apologies for the cold. Oh, sir. Uh, shall I attend to your uniform, sir? No, no, my good man. Go with my men to my tent. I need to think a while, and I wish to be alone. Of course, sir. May the heavenly bless you. No, Henry. <laughs> oh, God have mercy, old heart. <laughs> Thank you. You speak so cheerfully. Right, who goes there then? A friend, a friend. Talk to me, are you, you an officer or a base commoner? I'm neither. I am a, a gentleman of, of a company. You carrying your weapons, son? Of course, for you. <laughs> Stupid question. Pistol by name, pistol by nature, look at that. <laughs> Well, by that, you would uh, consider yourself better with that pistol than, say, uh, a general. Oh, the general is a bullcock. He's got a heart of gold. He's a, he's a lad of life, an imp of favour. I tell you, what, I love the lovely bully. <laughs> What's your name then? Harry. Uh, Harry Leroy. Leroy. Sounds Cornish. You part of that Cornish crew then? Uh, no, no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a Welshman. Huh. Do you know um, Flewellyn, then? Yes, I do. Huh. Well, tell him next, uh, next Davies Day, I'll knock his leak upon his fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> well, you best not bring your pistol about you that day, unless he knocks his leak about your face. Huh. You his friend, then, are you? Aye. And his kinsman, too. No. Oh. Well, in that case, you can piss off! Well, I have no quarrel with you, but I thank you. I'll be on my way. Yeah, you better, you bloody hooded clown. I am Pistol, right? Pistol by name? Pistol by nature. <laughs> yes, it sorts well with your fierceness. Yeah, you better believe it. <laughs> Captain Fluellen! Hey, uh in the name of Christ, speak lower. This is the closest position to the front line that we can be. Do not give away our position, boyo. Why, why, the enemy is loud. You can hear them from here. 
And if the enemy is an ass, a fool, and an idiot, and we are caught here and taken prisoner, then should we not also be an ass, a fool, and an idiot? I will speak lower. I pray you do, or else we may not live to see the morning. Oh, it appears a little out of fashion. There is much care and valour in you, Welshman. The Bates. Is that not the morning which Bates on the horizon? It is. But we don't have great cause to desire the approach of day. You will see the beginning of the day. But I think we shall never see the end of it. Who goes there? A friend. A friend. Under what captain serve you? Under Sir Thomas Erpingham. Ah, a good old commander and a most kind gentleman. What does he think of our chances tomorrow? He thinks the men are wrecked, and they'll be washed off in the next wave. Has he not there shared his thoughts with the general? No, nor do I think he should. Although I think the general is just a man, as I am, all of his senses being human. Campfire smells to him as it does to me. Therefore he fears the enemy just as we do. The only difference being that he must not show his fears. But by doing so, he would certainly dishearten his soldiers. He may show his outward courage. But I wish he were in the Thames up to his neck and I with him. Anything to escape this fate tomorrow. By my honour, I will speak to my commander. I think the general would not wish himself anywhere but where he is now. Then I wish he were here alone then. And that he would surrender. So all these men's lives could be saved. Come now, I'm certain you don't wish any man to be here alone. I know myself, I would rather die here fighting than be at home hiding. There's more to this than we know. Aye, and more we should know. All we know is we are the general soldiers. If his cause be wrong, our service wipes out the crime. We're just following his orders. Ah, uh, but if the cause be wrong, the general himself has an heavy reckoning to make. And all those legs and arms and heads blown off in battle to join together at a later date and cry, we died at such a place. Some swearing, some crying, some crying for a surgeon, some upon their wives left behind, some upon their children. I'm afraid that there are a few that die well, die in battle. Now, if these men do not die well, it will be a black day for the general that led them to it. Well, so, by your rule, if a son is sent out by his father out to the sea, and the boat sinks, by your rule, then it is the fisherman's fault. Or if a servant under his master's command goes shopping and is attacked and killed by robbers, then the master is to blame. No, 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 the general is not bound to the particular endings of his soldiers, nor the father for his son, nor the master for his servant. None of us wished for death when we were sent to war. A son may carry the guilt for the loss of friends, and now those men are fighting two wars. The war outside and the war inside their souls. The general is not guilty for his soldiers' deaths. Their duty is to king and to country, and every soldier's soul and end yeah, is his own. Certain. It is certain every man that dies, his, his death is on his own head, but the general is also to answer for it. I do not want him to answer for me, and yet here I stand, ready to fight for him. Well, I myself heard the general say that he would not surrender. Ah, uh, he said so, to make us fight. But when our throats are cut, he may still surrender and we will still be dead. And if I live to see, I'll never trust his word after. Well, that's a perilous answer. You'll never trust his word after. That's a foolish thing to say. You dishonour your commander. I would be angry with you if the time were right. We are overwhelmed with enough enemies already. Let it be a quarrel between us. If you live. No, it will be. I can assure you that. I shall know you tomorrow. What's your name, soldier? Oh, give me something of yours. I will wear it in my uniform. Then, if I live, you will know it by me. When I find you, I'll make you honourable again. Here's a photo of my son. So you can explain my death to him. Give me something of yours. If I live, I'll find you when the battle is done. There's my glove. There's my initials inside the cuff. I'll wear this in my helmet. If you come to me after tomorrow and say, this, this is your glove. And by my hand, I will show you the rights and wrongs of war. If I live to see it, I will challenge you. You might as well be hanged now. I would do it now if we could spare the men. But we count on every life tomorrow. Keep your word. If we live, I'll be waiting. Be friends! You English fools, be friends! We have Germans to fight, not each other! 
Good night to you, soldier. I hope it's not our last. Indeed. The Chuns outnumber us heavily. Good night to you. I hope to see you again. Upon the general. Let us risk our lives, our souls, our wives, and our children all lay upon the head of the general. I must bear all subject to the breath of every fool. What infinite heartache must a general feel that his men do not? What does a general have that his soldiers do not? I forget ceremony and medals and honor. What are they? Oh, ceremony, show me your worth. What oh, poison flattery. Sick and painful medal will I earn from this ceremony and praise for a job well done. Is that supposed to be a cure for this hellish nightmare? The chair that I sit on is full of thorns. I would give it all up just to sleep soundly as a slave. Oh God of battles, steal my soldiers' hearts. Take the beer from them now. Oh Lord, what more can I do? Yeah, my good old friend. Collect them together at my tent. I'll be there soon. I shall, sir. <laughs> Look how the sun does shine upon my army. Your army? <laughs> Not some intersevent. My army is truly a magnificent sight. <laughs> oh, braver sir. Will you be fighting on the front line today? I will fight Sir Aniflada Field, unstoppable like a tank. <laughs> you think yourself bulletproof then? <laughs> you see, but it is English. Ah, here comes the chief replacement of the army. A little. I hit you. Wow, how you stand so proudly, gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> I will move so fast, the English will not see me coming. They will not see us coming because their eyes will be blurred with tears. <laughs> <laughs> the English are on the move and trying to gain higher ground. To your positions, all units, straight to defensive positions. Let us make easy work of this poor and starved half band of soldiers. Let them see us, so a mighty number shall suck away their souls, leaving them like empty shells or husks of men. There are not enough work for all of our hands, nor is there enough blood in all of their sticky veins to stain one red stripe upon our flag. Our approach shall so much scare the English they will crouch down in fear and yield! <laughs> Shall we give them dinner and fresh uniforms? And have to go fight with them? They are beaten already, it hardly seems fair. <laughs> I am waiting for my reinforcements, but I cannot wait any longer. To the battlefield, come, come away! The sun is high and we will outlive the day! <laughs> We can take the ground here, we can break through to the town of Bastogne, and all our allies will be there to connect up with us. If we win here, we may turn the tide of the war! But look how encircled we are. I'm afraid it can't be done. Where's the general? The general has gone to view the battlefield. Fighting men, we think they have 3,000 or more. Yeah, it's five to one. And they're freshly rested and fed. God's arms strike with us today. They are fearful odds. God be with you all. I'll get to my men. If I don't see you again, I'll see you in heaven, boys. Westmoreland, Exeter, warriors all. Good fucking luck, boys. Good luck to the lot of you. We're gonna need it. Fight valiantly today. Never was there soldiers who could fight with such valor. What use is valor to a dick man? 
Oh, here comes your general. Oh, I wish we had 10,000 more men from England. Is that what you wish, McMorris? No, for if we are marked to die, then we are enough to do our country the loss. And the fewer men that live, the greater the share of the honor. And I pray not one man more. But if it is a sin to have honor, then I am the most blaspheming soul alive. No, by my faith, I do not wish one man more from England. In fact, let it be known throughout this army that he that has no stomach to this fight, let him depart. We'll give passport for his way out and money for convoy put into his purse. For we would not die in that man's company that fears his fellowship to die with us. This day is called the Feast of Crispian. He that shall outlive this day and see old age will say, tomorrow is St. Crispin's day. Then will he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, these wounds I had on Crispin's day. And then shall all our names be remembered. Exeter, Westmoreland, Jamie, McMorris, Gower, Flewellyn, Erpingham. All men shall remember these names. All men shall raise cups to these names and this story, and all good men shall teach this story to their sons. And Crispin's day shall never go by from this day to the ending of the world, but we in it will be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers. For he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day will gentle his condition. And gentlemen in England, safely in bed, will think themselves cursed that they were not here while anyone speaks of those who fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day! Yeah! Oh, yeah! My general, gather your troops with speed. The Germans are in the battlefield and will charge at us at any moment. All things be ready if our minds be so. It's the men whose mind is backward now. Do we not wish more from England then? Ha! Huh. With God's will, my general, you and I alone, without more help, could fight the royal battle. Why well, now you have unwished a whole thousand men. We all know our positions. You know your places. God be with you all. General! Here comes the dirty mouth of the crowds. A messenger, Montjoy. For the last time, General Henry, I come for your surrender before your most assured overthrow. For it is certain you are near your end, thousands and need not die. I bid thee to send my former answer back. Bid them to kill me and then sell my bones. And good God, why would they mock us so? Trying to sell the lion's skin while the beast is still alive is a foolish venture, messenger. And many of our bodies shall no doubt find graves here. But to those who leave their valiant bones, we'll make them the heroes of this story. Now let me speak proudly. We are warriors of the working day. Our hearts are in the fight, and neither myself nor my soldiers will ever surrender. Tell that to your general. I shall, sir, and goodbye. I fear we shall never meet again. I fear you shall once more come to, come to us and beg us for surrender. Now, soldiers, we march away, and let us dispose of this most valiant day! Yes, General. Good evil! Oh, the dirt <coughs> is lost! All is lost! Blood, my demons! Everlasting shame puts on my head, so not run away! All our ranks are broke! Oh! Uh, uh. God, these be the lectures we played at dice! Is this the same general we sent to for his surrender? Shame. Turn to shame, nothing but shame. Oh, let us die here today, in honor! No, not a gentleman here, nothing but dogs! The soldier finds us now! Let us, let us burn and live another day, yeah? Nine. 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 We have some yet living in the field. We can still fight the English. I give the orders now. Turn and fight. The devil gives orders now. Let life be short, else shame be too long. <laughs> How well we have done, valiant countrymen. We must keep fighting. Push the front line. Blue Ian commands us to help him on the other side. 
He lives! Good God, three times I saw him shot and three times up again in the fight! From his helmet to his boots all covered in blood! Brave soldier, sir! And by his bloody side, Captain Gower! Bellows in honour, owning their wounds! Then I came upon the noble Westmoreland! All heaven over! I cried aloud, My soul shall keep you company! Upon these words, he teared up! He smiled at me and said, My dear friend, it is my honour to fight by your side! And then he died in my arms! What of my mother came to me, and I gave up to tears! I don't blame you. Hearing this brings me to tears also. Thanks to look. Look how the Germans have reinforced their scattered men, and upon retreat they've killed our boys and our luggage. The prisoners! Let every soldier kill his prisoners too! Exit to give the order! The fleeing Germans have killed the boy and the prisoners! This is expressly against the laws of arms! This is the most arrogant piece of work that I ever did see, is it not? It is certain the boy is not alive, and the cowardly rascal that ran from the battle have done this slaughter. They have burned all to nothing, and so the general gives the order that each soldier must cut his prisoners' throats? Aye, well, he is a born killer, Gower, just like Cap Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great? Did Alexander the Great not kill all of his prisoners of war? Our general is not like him. He never before killed a single prisoner. This is not well done. You mark my words now, Boyo. He is not in his right wits and good judgment. We cannot follow this order. Here comes a general now. I was not angry since I came to France until this instant. Ride up that hill, take a message to the remaining Germans. If they surrender, tell them to come down to the field. If they will not, we will cut the throats of those we have left and show no mercy. Now go, tell them. Aye, sir. Here comes the messenger for the Germans. And what now? What do you want, messenger? You have so many bones to bury and now you come to beg us for surrender. No, great general, I come to look to our dead. Our captains, our soldiers, great general, let us view the battlefield from the safety and collect our dead bodies. I will tell you the truth, messenger. I don't know if the day be ours or not. The day is yours. Yes! <sighs> Praise be God and not our strength for it. What do they call this place? They call it Mont Baston. And call this the Field of Baston. Mark it down for remembrance who fought here today on the day of Christmas. All the water in the world cannot wash away the blood spilt in Bastogne, I can tell you that. Exit to go with him. Bring me a list of numbers dead on both sides. Llewellyn, call that soldier over here. Hey, soldier, Boyo, come to the general now. Soldier, pray tell, why do you have a glove in your hat? If it please you, sir, it's a gauge of one that I should fight, if he be alive. Not an Englishman, surely? Yes, sir. A rascal that I crossed paths with last night. If he be alive, sir, I have sworn to box him in the ear. Or if I see the photo I gave him, which he swore he would carry to remember me by. Captain Llewellyn, give me good counsel. Do you think it right this soldier should keep his oath? Well, he can do nothing else, if it please you, General. In my opinion, I think these men should fight. Ah, caution, Captain Llewellyn. Maybe his enemy is a gentleman of a high rank. <laughs> or as good a gentleman as the devil. But for honour, he must keep his oath. Well then, keep your vow, sir, when thou meet the fellow. So I will, General, as I live. Tell me, who do you serve under? Under Captain Gower, sir. Oh, Gower is a good captain. Give me that glove, soldier. Let me see. Ah, look. Here is the other with the matching initials. And is this not your photograph? Yes, it was me you indeed promised to strike. What now, Williams? Shall we fight? All my offences, General, come from the art. I never meant anything that might offend you, sir. Yet you were happy to offend our soldiers. <sighs> sir, you came to me not like yourself, not in uniform. You appeared but as a common soldier. I beg your forgiveness. 
I do forgive you, soldier. Your debt has been paid for. It was this photograph of your son that kept me going through this tragedy. But the next time you face a dark night of the soul, remember this. Know that there is goodness in all men, even, though, even in your enemies. Now, oh, Monjoy, pray tell. However, dead numbered. He is the number of the slaughtered German army. How many prisoners were taken and not killed? All our prisoners are accounted for, sir. Officers Himmler surrendered and 15 soldiers. And this note from Monjoy tells me that some 10,000 German uniforms lie in the field slain. The names of those will also not be forgotten. All men by rank that could be identified. 19,000 men killed in action since the beginning of this battle, sir. Oh, God. When all the history of battles was ever known, so great a loss as Bastogne. We must push forward from here to the Austrian-German border. We have new orders to take the high-ranking prisoners Himmler to Mount Kelsty. At the summit is the Third Reich building known as the Eagle's Nest. There we should find the stronghold of the German army. Next to assemble our best men, for I hope to bargain for the release of a captive, Catherine of France. Battle is won, but we still have much to lose. American reinforcements will join us in two days. We must bring this war to a close and negotiate a ceasefire with Germany. Only there will there be a chance for peace in Europe once more. Vouchsafe to those that have not read the story that I may prompt them to admit the excuse of time, of numbers and due course of things, which cannot in their huge be properly presented here. Now, behold the great Mount Kelstein, and at its base, our band of brothers, and at its peak, the Eagle's Nest. Here we see Henry sit upon his final throne. He must make a deal for peace and end this war, for all is lost and the world turned to stone. In this place untouched by war, the exchange must unfold. Now turning towns and battlefields into a maze and stolen gold. Captain Fluellen, why are you wearing a leak where your medal should be? Is it St. David's Day today? There is occasion and cause in all things, I will tell you, my friend. So, the rascally lousy pistol, as a joke, prepared me some breakfast to eat on this St. David's Day. It was consisting entirely of raw leek. <laughs> so I did swear, I will wear a leek on my chest until I see him again, and I will make him eat raw leek. Oh, why, here he comes, swaggering like a turkey. Oh, it is no matter for his swagger, nor his turkey. Ah, oh, good day to you, ancient pistol, you scurvy, lousy dog. <laughs> uh, you are the uh, a Welshman, are you not? Uh, how was your breakfast? Oh, Jesus Christ, your breath stinks. I'm a bit squeamish <laughs> to the smell of leek. I see you prepare my food, you scurvy, lousy knave. So to return the favour, I swore to find you and share my breakfast with you. This leak here. Mm, I know your appetite and your digestion does not agree with it. It has a mark of respect for St. David's Day. I would desire you eat it. <laughs> Not for all the goats in Austria. Oh, really? Well, there's one goat for you. How about you, boy? <laughs> oh, Jesus! <laughs> Christ, help me, Gower! <laughs> Will you be so good a scoundrel as to eat as a mark of respect? Base Trojan, I shall not eat. Ah, no, I won't. I won't eat your leaf. <laughs> Ah, you speak some truth, but I desire that you live for the meantime, and I will make you eat on St. David's Day. If you can mock a leak, you can eat a leak! Uh, uh, enough, Captain. Oh. You have paid him back. I say, I will make him eat some part of my leak. Bite, I pray you. It is good for you to eat your greens. 
I will not eat my greens. Back off. Yes, you will. Certainly you will. Ah, uh, yes. Would you like some sauce with your leek? Huh? I there is not enough leek in the world to service you. I will bloody take horrible revenge on you. I will not eat it, I swear. Yes, you will. So much good food for you. Eat heartily now. Throw none of it away. The skin is good for you too. And when you take occasion to see Leek again, I pray you will not mock them. All right, all right, all right. I'll eat it. I'll be good. I'll be good. Ah, yeah. good. Leek is good. Oh, and I bet you'll remember St. David's Day from now on, eh? Oh, I shall. Oh, Jesus. I shall never forget the taste of Christ raw bloody Leek. Uh, yes, and you uh, shall take it away with you. Or I have another one in my pocket that you will eat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. I'm all hell tells Daphne. Uh, go, go. You will not uh, mock at an ancient tradition and show more honourable respect. You thought because he was not English, he could not therefore handle an Englishman, and now you find it otherwise. Let a Welshman teach you a good English manner. <laughs> Fare thee well, Pistol. Leak, Leak man. <laughs> Leak da boy <laughs> uh, Piss off, Gower. Flewellyn. What's this? What do you want? What? what what's that? Oh, <laughs> Fortune plays havoc with me now, does it? <laughs> Bad news, I have. <laughs> I know. She's dead. And my friends barred up and then they're hung for their crimes. Their bones left here in fucking France. And I am cut off. Well, old I feel now and from my weary limbs, service is gone. I may not be the most honourable of soldier, but there is good in all men. Well, now I'll turn to England and there I'll steal some patches for my scars and swear I got them all fighting in the Great War. Here, here comes the High Commander and his Fraulein, sir. Very well. May we have some... Peace between us, or if you prefer, terms for surrender. For France, Germany, England, and their peoples, I wish good health and fair treatment. Especially for Catherine, the young woman you have held captive. I would like to see her and know how she lives. Thank you for your kind treatment <clears throat> of the prisoners. General of England, you must know my surrender will not be to you. I commend you for taking good care of our German prisoners. We hope by this meeting that we shall put down all griefs in quarrels. Well, I agree to that. But it uh, appears here in the eagle's nest, as you so put it, you have all become prisoners, for my men surround the base of Mount Kelstein. Yeah, we know, and I do wish th that we could be allowed to return home to Berlin. And duty is to you both in equal respect. I have labored with all my wits to bring you both most honorable leaders here to peace. I do plead with you, General, to be moderate towards it. And if you wish for peace, you must buy that peace with full accords to our demands. But you heard the terms, my Führer. Hitler, please. I have not yet heard his answer. Well then, the peace we so urge lies in his very answer. I will, with a cursory eye, look at the articles for surrender. If we could appoint someone of your council to come and with us and survey the wealth we have acquired, I think you will accept some form of surrender. Oh my God. That wasn't so hard, was it? Gower, go with them. I give you free power to ratify our demands. You, Ava, 
You'll stay here with us. How gracious of you, sir, but I must go with them. Happily, a woman's voice may do some good when talking for peace. Kate, you're alive. My orders since I left England have been to find you and to come here and to save you. Oh, we have not met, but uh, I personally feel as if I already know you. My apologies, it's uh, been at war so long I've, I truly have forgotten how to speak to a lady. Uh, will, you, will you teach a soldier how to speak as truth? General, do you mock me? I cannot speak English as well as you. Well, Kate, if you if you can feel love with your heart, I will gladly hear you speak in a broken English tongue. For um, now I see you for the first time, I, I won't mince my words. Uh, do you like me as a soldier, Kate? Uh, Pardonnez-moi, <laughs> I, um, I cannot tell what you mean by uh, like me. Well, um, uh, how to... Ah, an angel is, is like you, Kate, and, uh, and you are, are like an angel. Uh, what is it <laughs> you mean I am uh, like an uh, angel? <laughs> Ah, oh, oui, yes, that is what the man says. I, I think so, Kate, and, and I believe it, too. Oh, bon dieu, the tongues of men be full of deceits. What did she say? The, the tongues of men are full of deceits? Ah, uh, oui, that the tongues of the man's is full of deceits. Yes, that is what she says. <laughs> Spoken like a true English woman. Uh, Kate, if my tongue is not fit for your understanding, then... Pardon me. I am glad you can't speak English. I don't mince my words, but I say directly to you that um, I, lo I love you, and um, so we, we shall shake on it and uh, make a bargain. What do you say, my lady? With all due respect, I understand what you mean, but I hardly know you. I'm sorry, I, I speak as a plain soldier. Um, well, if you can love me for a plain soldier, then then take me. If not, then I, I shall die. I'm, I'm sorry, I had no gift in talking to a lady, but I do have a good heart. And if you would take a soldier, then take me. Please say something. Is it possible <laughs> love at first sight? <laughs> no, I... I did not think it possible, but I think it possible in loving me that you should love a friend who should and could keep you safe. I cannot tell what it is you are saying. Kate, it is easier for me to conquer nations than to speak to a beautiful woman, but uh, Kate, do you believe in, in the stars or, or in fate? I, uh, I believe in fate, but in love I cannot tell what my fate is. Can, can any of our neighbours tell, Kate? Just please, promise you'll give me a chance. I just cannot tell what my fate is in love. <laughs> well, just give me a chance, Kate, please. I... I do not know you. <laughs> then promise me that you might have an answer for me soon. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. You are too much. But I I like your words. By my honour, in, in true English, I do love you, Kate. Take my hand and say, Henry of England, I am yours. And then I will tell you aloud, England is yours. Ireland is yours, France is yours, and Henry is definitely yours. Your answer now in broken music, for your voice is music and your English is admittedly broken. But tell me now, can you, could you love me? Yes, if it will please you. <laughs> yes, it will certainly please me, Kate. It, it shall please me. Then it shall also please me. 
Well, upon that, I shall kiss your hand and I shall call you my queen. Stop! Stop! Please, I do not know you so well. Well, if not your hand, then I will kiss your lips, Kate. Oh, oh I, I will not be sad. Il ne parle pas comme de la France. Madame Alice, please be my interpreter. What does she say? Uh, that it is not the fashion of the ladies of France to, uh, oh, I cannot tell what it is. Um, uh, base, uh, uh, um, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, ah, yeah, yes, to kiss. On to kiss. Yeah, yes, yes, to kiss. Ah, yes, uh, that it is uh, not the custom of the French women to kiss. Yes, you are understand better than me. It is not a fashion for the women of France to kiss before they are married. Ah, oui, yes, that is what she says. Okay. Nice customs curtsy to great men. Dear Catherine, you and I cannot be constrained by our country's fashions, after all. You have witchcraft in your lips, Kate. There is more of a sugar touch in them than in all the tongues of France. Love is blind and I am blindly in love. <coughs> General, the um, uh, High Commander has granted every article of wealth stashed here. It was Eva that persuaded him. You may thank uh, love for our blindness, Gower. I will give you safe passage to cross the German border and retreat under a ceasefire. We shall not make more victims of this war. They have consented to the term, sir. Good. Gentlemen, I will make an oath that we shall have peace from this exchange. May this oath be well kept. May this act show that the nations of Germany and England may well be at peace. Give them leave to go. I will give you all safe passage to retreat to Berlin. Thus our negotiation now complete, and fair exchange is made. Only seen and heard by the eyes and ears in this room. Never to be repeated! I will return to Berlin to face the wrath of the Russian bear. But God willing, I will bring him to his knees. I will make this oath. I shall take the prisoner Catherine with me. Prisoner no longer. And our countries shall no longer be at war. For all tales must end, and all rivers must run to the sea. The death you have caused in this time shall never be forgotten by me. Thus far, our straining author has pursued the story with his, well, somewhat crude and inadequate writing, keeping important people penned up in this little room, yelling as he mangled history's uh, uneven telling, uneven and strained, but seated thus, were you not entertained? The lifespan of our English hero, was brief, yes, but in that brief time, he achieved greatness. He had good luck as a warrior, and with it, he created the world's greatest garden, a united Europe. Shattered now, asunder. We watch and wait in despair and wonder as to its fate. For once our allies, the mighty Russian bear and the soaring eagle of the United States now peck and tear on the rotting corpse of Europe and would see its strength so hard and bitterly fought for, brought to bended knee and serve their will, until perhaps another, braver than those who rule us now, come of position and restore our country's name to former glory. Will such a leader bring our kingdom all it needs? or we'll strip it of all and make it bleed. This tale now in the making this very day, yet to be told, will undoubtedly be performed on the stage of an unwritten 
future. Another play for you to kindly judge until the May.